Boston Free Radio community. My name is Melissa and I'm one of the Spring 2021 BFR interns and today I'm going to be talking about making Facebook and Instagram posts to increase the exposure of your show and help you gain more listeners. Social media are great tools to highlight not only your show's content but also alert listeners to some behind the scenes action as well as when they can tune in. If you don't already have a Facebook and Instagram, I recommend making one now. Both are great platforms for reaching your audiences, but Facebook does tend to attract a larger, uh, older population, whereas Instagram does tend to attract more of a youth population. To get the widest space possible, of course, it's best to use both platforms, uh, especially since they're owned by the same company. You can cross post, otherwise known as posting simultaneously on both platforms. However, if you are just going to choose one platform, I personally recommend Instagram as users tend to be more open to frequent posting as in once or maybe even more than once a day. And also the posts on Instagram tend to get more likes and comments than those on Facebook. First, we're gonna talk about what makes a social media post. And for that, we'll be using Heather's three eyes. Now, before you make a post, you should think, is it informative, is it interesting, and is it interactive? If not, maybe you should think about making that post to your story as opposed to your feed. If you're looking for more information on posting to your story, you can check out the other BFR Spring 2021 intern Kayla's video where she goes into a little more detail about that. Before you can determine this though, what do the three eyes really mean? Well, I'll tell you. might be cluing in readers to an upcoming show, a guest interview for the week, a, maybe even a playlist. And an interesting post might be about something that's related to the content of your show, but that you might not have discussed fully in it. Essentially, this is a tangentially related topic that you didn't want to take the full time to discuss on air or that you learned more about after the actual show, so you want listeners to know as well. Finally, all of your posts should be interactive in some way, shape, or form. You want listeners to not only be inclined to respond to your post, but feel as though they can't scroll past it without doing so. Now we can start posting. I'm going to start by showing you how to make an informative post. And the main type of informative post that you'll likely be making will be announcements for your show. You're going to want to make these either the day before, the day of, or the day after your show airs, depending on your audience and the time of your show. For my college radio show, What Would You Play?, which I'll be using as an example, we prefer to make announcements after the show airs because listeners can check them out up to two weeks after that point before they're erased from the online database. If you have a morning show, you might want to post an hour before the show or even a night before if you're prepared with show content. If you have an afternoon show, you can probably post the morning of. If you have a late night show, you might want to post in the afternoon or the day after if it saves in the system like mine does. It's all based on who you're trying to reach and when you want them to listen, so make sure to keep that in mind. My post is going to be alerting listeners that the show and playlist are available, so they should hop too. My show utilizes Instagram because our audience, college students, is more likely to use this platform. So I'll be making an Instagram pish posh. So I'll be making an Instagram post today with Canva which is a social media marketing tool where you can create posts for publication on your personal account. If you need an introduction to Canva, you should check out the BFR graphic video tutorial where I detail not only how to make an account, but the basics of using the graphic design features. For making this post, I'm not gonna use a template because I plan to use a lot of my own elements and I'm not really interested in deleting so many things from a template. If you're not super interested in adding your own images and elements though, and you just want a basic announcement, I definitely recommend browsing the templates for one that suits the aesthetic of your show the best. 
the first thing I'm going to do is change my background because the last thing you want for an Instagram post is for it to lack color. People are scrolling through an absurd amount of images and you need to make sure that yours is colorful enough to catch their attention. If you have light images, pick a dark background and if you have dark images, pick a light background. If you're interviewing a person or something of that sort, feel free to use an image of them as your background. Now I'm going to add graphic elements that relate to my show's episode, which was near-death experiences. So I'm going to be looking for a skull, maybe a lifeline, and then some text that's really just going to kind of fit that mood and that theme. And the text is the most important part of the post because it's informing the listeners and the viewers of why you've made it. You want to keep it short and get straight to the point so people don't start scrolling again after reading half of it. For mine, I'll just say, what would you play if you were having a near-death experience? It grabs the reader's attention and I can put the rest of the information in the caption. Chances are, if someone stopped to read your post, they will check the caption, so don't feel like you have to put all of your information in the image itself. However, if you have too much information, even for a caption, you can use up to 10 Instagram slides in one post. I'm only going to be using two slides, and my additional slide is just going to be a screenshot of the playlist, because that really speaks for itself, and I don't even need to put that in Canva, so it saves me a little bit of time as well. And now comes the post. I have my graphic and my screenshot ready, so I just need to put it into Instagram. You can do this by saving the Canva graphic or graphics to your phone's images. Instagram already pulls up your photo library and this way it'll be ready when you need to post it. If you're using multiple images like me, you're gonna need to hit the multi-select button in the bottom right of the photo block on your phone screen. Then you just click on the photos you want to use in order of how you want them to appear. You can tell the order the images will show up by the number on the box. When you've selected your photos with the order correct, you begin making your graphic interactive. Once you've pulled up this screen, the first thing you'll want to do is put your location in as SMC or BFR so people know where you're at. They might click on this to see more about the location, which will draw them to BFR or SMC. And you can also get creative with it. So for my show last semester, we would pre-record remotely in our apartment. So we would say a brownstone on Bay State Road or Zoom to reference conversations we might have had during the show and to kind of relate with the college audience, which is, of course, people who go to our school and who know exactly what we're talking about when we say a brownstone on Bay State Road. For this post, I'm keeping mine simple with the studio location. Once you've done that, I like to start adding the tags because I'm prone to forget them otherwise. By tags, I mean when you tag other Instagram users and accounts in your post. For example, I tag all my DJs in the photo itself as opposed to the caption because it gets money otherwise. If people are actually pictured in your post, you should click on their faces. If not, you can randomly select like I'm doing. Next, we'll do the comment slash caption. You can make these longer, but you still should keep it short, again, so people will read all the way through. Here, I'll keep it to the five W's, who, what, when, where and why and here's what i came up with missed our first show no worries check out friday's 10 to midnight show at headphones.bu.edu before it's taken away february 19th listen to your favorite djs and new digits discuss their near-death experiences disney's soul and more the who this is more implied here, but you can look to our or your favorite DJs to see it's the show itself. The what, the show that's up to the site. The when, available for listen anytime in the next two weeks. The where, the station's website. The why, all the cool stuff I mentioned us talking about. 
Another way that you can make your post interactive is using a hashtag. So a hashtag is basically just keywords or phrases that are going to help draw attention to your post by being more accessible. So when people do searches, hashtags will often pop up and then that just makes your post pop up more frequently. I'm going to be hashtagging things that of course are related. So that would be near-death experience, otherwise known as NDE. And then you can also hashtag your show name and really anything that might be of relevance. You could hashtag radio, hashtag SMC, hashtag BFR, but these are the hashtags that I'm going to stick with and leave it at that. Now you can post. Here is where cross posting comes back in. So if your post is not specific to Instagram or Facebook, you should slide on the cross post feature so it will simultaneously publish on both platforms. And that's an informational interactive post. Now we're gonna move on to the second post type, which is an interesting post. As I previously mentioned, this might be about something that's related to what you talked in during your show, but that you weren't able to fully explore and you wanna provide a little more information on. longer because there's more information that needs to be put in and that does need to be put in the actual post as opposed to the caption. We can use also more imagery to mix in with the words such as newspaper headlines and some other elements that might work really well for this. For my post I'll be covering where Boston ranks on Wallet Hub's list of worst places to drive in the U.S because we had a lengthy discussion about how Boston has bad drivers during our previous episode. The first and second slide I'm going to keep very basic. These are just to draw attention, not really to give information. Then I'm going to tack on statistics and more of the actual information in the next few slides while still keeping it pretty basic. Now, I won't be tagging anyone in the image because there isn't really a reason to do so. I also will use this opportunity to label Boston as the location as opposed to the studio, which could potentially attract some clicks. For the caption, I'm going to keep things short because most of the information here is in the actual post. Boston does have bad drivers and what would you play? DJs have some killer instincts. Where have you encountered egregious driving? Drop cities in the comments. And then for examples of hashtags, I could potentially use hashtag driving, hashtag bad drivers, hashtag traffic, or really anything that was mentioned along those lines in the post. Definitely hashtag wallet hub and things along those lines. And that's the post. for making an Instagram post. You can do the same thing with Facebook and you might just want to post less often on that platform because again, those users are a little less welcoming to daily posts. However, you're welcome to post wherever and whenever you so choose, but you'll definitely want to post at least once a week for an announcement of your show or just once every time your show is going to air. And you're gonna wanna try to make at least one miscellaneous post a week so that you can keep your audience engaged, both your listeners to the show and your followers on whatever platform you're using. I hope that this was helpful and thank you so much for taking the time to watch. And I hope that with it, you're able to reach your social media marketing goals.